These days, job titles like data scientist, machine learning engineer, and AI engineer are literally everywhere. And if you were anything like me, it's quite hard to understand what these roles actually do unless you're working in the field. And then there are even more confusing roles like LLM, robotics, quantum, blockchain engineer. Okay, I'm making that one up, but you get the point. The job market is full of these buzzwords, which makes it really difficult to understand where to start if you're interested in a career in machine learning. In this video, I want to break down all the top machine learning roles and explain exactly what each one entails plus giving you exactly the knowledge you need if you want to have that job. Let's get into it. A data scientist is probably the most well-known role, but it has a widest range of responsibilities. In general, there are two types of data scientists. The first one is one who does analytics and experiments. And the second one who's focused on machine learning and modeling. The former includes things like running a B test, doing deep dives to understand whether the business is struggling or could improve on, or understanding exactly the areas where machine learning models are weakest in. In general, a lot of this work is something called explanatory data analysis, or EDA for short. And data scientists who are more focused on the analytics side basically just look at data and try to find where the data is telling us the business could be lacking or could improve upon. It's basically just understanding where the weakest points are and then bringing that to the relevant people, whether it be the key stakeholders or machine learning engineers who build the machine learning models. Now, the latter type of data scientist, the one who's more focused on machine learning and modeling, basically do just that. They build models, decision-making algorithms and machine learning models that improve the way the business operates and improves the business decision-making. They will then work with software engineers and machine learning engineers to deploy those models so they make live predictions. Many of these machine learning models that they will develop will be on the simpler side using regular supervised and unsupervised learning techniques like XGBoost, Random Forest, K-Means, and maybe a few neural networks here and there, but nothing overly complex. I was a data scientist in my old company, but I mainly focused on building machine learning models and didn't really run many A-B tests. A lot of the experimental and A-B test work was carried out by data analysts or product analysts. But in my new company, where I'm a machine learning engineer, I primarily build machine learning models like I did in my old job, but the data scientists here don't do any of that and they run more experiments and inference type of problems. So you see, the data scientist's job means a lot of different things depending on what company you're at. So if you want to do machine learning and you want to be a data scientist, that's completely fine. It's just when you do apply for roles, make sure you read the job description properly. Because like I said, a data scientist at one company may be doing a completely different job to a data scientist at another company. That's kind of a big problem with a lot of these machine learning roles because they're not standardized across the industry. So it's really important that don't necessarily focus on the title, but really focus on actually what the job description says you're going to be doing and the key responsibilities you will have. As a data scientist, these are generally the things you need to know, particularly if you're going down the machine learning route. Python and SQL, Git and GitHub, command line, so things like Bash and Zshell, statistics and maths knowledge, basic machine learning skills, and a bit of cloud systems like AWS, Azure, and GCP. Again, like I said, the data scientist role just varies so much across the industry that you may need certain skills in a certain company which are not required in another company. But those skills are kind of like the fundamentals that will be applied in most roles, at least from what I've seen. If you're looking for a roadmap, then I really recommend DataCamp's associate data scientist with Python Track. It will set you up nicely for creating data science and it's linked in the description below if you want to check it out. As the title says, a machine learning engineer is all about building machine learning models and deploying them into production. The machine learning engineer role is actually a subset of software engineering, but over time as machine learning has become a lot more popular, more well known and more well used, machine learning engineering is like its own discipline nowadays. Many people ask me what is the difference between a data scientist and a machine learning engineer. Now there is a lot of overlap depending where you are and in general the work is quite similar, but the key distinction between the two roles is that machine learning engineers are really good engineers and they know how to deploy algorithms to production independently. As leading AI and ML practitioner Chip Huyen says, the goal of data science is to generate business insights, whereas the goal of ML engineering is to turn data into products. You'll find that even though the backgrounds are often similar, data scientists more often come from maths, stats, economics backgrounds, where it's a lot more like, you know, stats heavy and a lot more inference heavy. Whereas engineers or the machine learning engineers 
come from more science, engineering, physics types of backgrounds. Now, that's definitely not, you know, 100% correct for everyone. You have people from either side or either backgrounds going into the other either role because, you know, maths is related to pretty much all those job titles. But in general, there is a slight distinction, particularly when you get deep into the industry, you will see that there is differences between the two roles at certain companies. However, like I said, some companies, you may be both, right? So in my old company, as a data scientist, I was pretty much both roles. So I was building models, developing them, doing analysis, and also selling them to production. So again, it really comes down to exactly the company you work at. And at most companies, the data scientist and machine learning engineer role will be blended into one, typically the data scientist title. The machine learning engineer role is actually more for like established companies or established tech firms where they really understand the difference between the two jobs and how they operate. But for the majority of companies, they probably won't have machine learning engineers. They'll just have data scientists and software engineers. That is what I've seen personally. But of course, again, it varies between geographies and just the size and volume of the company you work at. Now, if that's not complicated enough, the machine learning engineer role even gets more specialized. You have things like ML platform engineer, ML hardware engineer, ML solutions engineer. So it really does get a little bit more, like I said, complex the further you go down. I wouldn't worry too much about these individual specialisms now. They're only relevant after you've been working for a few years in the field and then you can like tailor where you wanna go. So for now, don't worry about those roles. It's just something to be aware of. If you're looking to break into the industry and kind of see where you wanna go, there are many different options within that ML engineer track in itself. The tech stack for machine learning engineers is very similar to that of a data scientist, but there's a few more software engineering elements. In general, these are the things you need to know. Python and SQL, However, some companies may require some other languages. For example, now in my current company, I'm also using Rust. So Python, SQL, Rust, and a little bit of Go. So it really depends on the need and like infrastructure of your company. And sometimes high performing languages like Rust or C++ might be used. But again, this is quite rare and Python and SQL were pretty much covered in most cases. So Git and GitHub as well, Bash and Zshell, cloud systems like Azure, AWS, and GCP. You also need to have really good software engineering fundamentals. So things like CICD, MLOps, and Docker. And also you need to have excellent machine learning knowledge, ideally a specialism in a few areas like recommendation systems, reinforcement learning, forecasting, LLMs, you know, just specialisms in a certain area that's like really popular nowadays. And if you want a roadmap to learn all these things, then I recommend DataCamp's machine learning engineer track who are kindly sponsoring this video. It's 44 hours of interactive content that'll teach you all the key things I mentioned, like containerization, CICD, ETL, software engineering best practices. These are all things that took me almost a year, over a year to learn, but you can get them in just 44 hours inside this track. The reason I really recommend DataCamp is that they make you learn through hands-on exercises after watching short video tutorials. So it's really efficient if you wanna learn something really quickly. I will leave a link to the machine learning engineer track in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. This is a new title that has recently cropped up due to all the hype and developments we've had with AI. And in my opinion, I don't think it's really needed. The AI engineer originally came from the machine learning engineer job, but like I said, with all these developments with these LLM models and AI, companies wanted like a dedicated title or dedicated job for people who worked with those systems. And naturally you'll go to the machine learning team because they're the ones that are most close with the current way or the, or the current kind of AI models that are being developed. However, from what I've seen, an AI engineer is very similar to machine learning engineer, depending on exactly how you want to work it. The reason I don't like that title is that AI engineer is not really an AI engineer, it's a gen AI engineer. And to most people outside the industry, that probably makes no sense to you. But AI as a term actually encompasses pretty much any decision making algorithm. It kind of supersets Gen AI, machine learning, deep learning, all these areas. So it's actually, you know, quite well known, well not well known, quite an old concept. It's been around for almost centuries as a, you know, as an idea of what it's meant to do. And like I said, the current definition of an AI engineer is mainly someone who works with Gen AI models and tries to bring them to production or create products out of them. So they're not really an AI engineer, they're a software engineer who's trying to like surface Gen AI products. 
So it's not the same type of work you'd be doing as a machine learning engineer where you're building models. It's a gen AI engineer or AI engineer, however you want to call it. The models already exist. And what you're trying to do is build products out of those models and adapt them to customers or to businesses to bring value essentially. As an AI engineer, you won't build these models from scratch, mainly because a lot of the large LLM models like ChatGPT, Claude, they, you know, they're so state of the art and to even run those models and train models like that, you need so much compute resource and you're just not beating them in most companies. So as an AI engineer, you're not building models from scratch, you're just adapting them to your use case, like I said. So the job is actually a lot closer to software engineering than it is to ML engineering because you're not developing those models. However, it's still quite new and it's constantly changing. So who knows, we may even get really specialized AI engineers who know LLMs really well and can basically train those models from scratch and also be really good software engineers. But at the moment, the field, like I said, is so, it's so new, no one really knows what's going on and it can just change so quickly. But in general, as it currently stands, an AI engineer is specifically someone who uses software engineering skills to apply them to build AI or gen AI products. So the things you need to become an AI engineer as it currently stands is very similar to that of being a software engineer, plus you need certain gen AI knowledge. So in general, the things you need to know are solid software engineering skills. So things like I mentioned in the ML engineer track, CICD, Docker, unit testing, things like that. Python, SQL, and backend languages like Java and Go are also very useful. So just being a really good backend software engineer is kind of like your crux or the fundamentals you need to have. CICD, Git, and then you need to know things like LLMs, transformers, RAG, prompt engineering, foundational models like OpenAIs, uh, Claude, things like that, and also how to fine tune models. So in a nutshell, if you want to become an AI engineer, Become a software engineer first and then develop your knowledge and skills in LLMs, Gen AI models, how to use things like Langchain, etc. That's kind of the general roadmap you need to become an AI engineer. If you want a really fleshed out roadmap, then I recommend DataCamp's Associate AI Engineer for Data Scientist track. I'll leave a link in the description below in case you want to check it out. The previous jobs I mentioned were mainly industry positions, but now we're gonna talk about two jobs which are more research focused. Industry roles are mainly associated with businesses and are all about generating business value. It doesn't matter how you do that, whether you build a state-of-the-art transformer model or you do a basic if-else statement. The point is you wanna generate impact to the business no matter how you do it. The goal of research, on the other hand, is all about trying to expand our current body of knowledge about a certain topic. So it involves things like running scientific experiments, running hypotheses and testing them out to see if we can generate any new insights about a certain topic. The difference between what's considered research and what's considered industry often overlaps in tech because a lot of the big tech companies like Meta, Google, Microsoft also have a research arm as well as the whole like product they offer in terms of the business side. So it's not uncommon to be working on products which are considered both research and both industry. For example, OpenAI's ChatGPT is kind of both research and business, right? Because it's a very novel model, but it's pretty much solving a product for people, right? So you can see there's a big overlap and the distinction is not often clear. If you're interested in learning more about how machine learning is used in industry versus research, then I recommend you check out the first lecture of Stanford's CS329S course, which is basically just discussing, like I said, the a difference between or the distinction between research and industry and how the different roles apply to it. It's quite long, but it's a very comprehensive view and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. In general, if you want to work in machine learning, I recommend you go for the industry positions because there's just so much more of them and you're way more likely to get it. Research is quite niche and it's something you will probably need a PhD for or at least a few years experience in at publishing papers and conducting experiments to break into. Not to mention industry can often pay the same as research, even though research is kind of on the upper end. But like I said, if you're looking to break into the field, go for industry first because there's so many more roles you get a lot more experience and then you can transition to research if that's something you want to do. Now, in terms of research positions, there are two main roles, research engineer and research scientist. At most companies, there's not much difference between them. However, if you want to be an established research company, there will be slight differences. 
Typically, what you find is that a research engineer will run the experiments and implement the ideas of a research scientist. And a research scientist would typically have a PhD, normally in a very machine learning heavy based thesis they will have as like their background. So they will typically come from a PhD in machine learning, stats, maths, and they will be very good at one area, like computer vision, neural networks, deep learning, you know, just whatever area. And the research engineer may have a PhD, but it's not. Def it's definitely not a requirement. So the research engineer will typically have a master's degree, but will often have quite a few experience or a few years experience working in machine learning, and also will have some sort of research experience, whether that be working in a research company, writing or working on a few papers. So you kind of need research experience for both, but the research scientist is definitely more on the research heavy type of role. But like I said, the difference at most companies is that they pretty much do the same job. Companies may offer you the research scientist position because it's seen as giving you more clout because it sounds like, you know, more fancier and therefore you're more likely to take the job. But from what I've seen, at least, even though I work in industry, is that the distinction between both of them is quite limited. But the main difference, like I said, is that the research scientist will typically have a PhD. And that's kind of what I've seen if you look at all the research companies like DeepMind, uh, Meta Research, they'll typically state that if you want to be a research scientist there, you'll need a PhD. So that's a key distinction between them. But again, don't if you're just looking to break into the field, don't worry too much about these research positions unless you're doing a PhD. But that's a very different kettle of fish. If you just want to become or work in machine learning, go for one of the other roles and research is something you can do later down the line. So the skills you need if you wanna work in research as a research engineer or research scientist is very similar to that of a machine learning engineer, but you tend to have more research experience. So you need to learn Python and SQL, Git and GitHub, Bash and Zshell, AWS, Azure, GCP, software engineering fundamentals to run the experiments if you're a research engineer or research scientist. You'll then need to have really good machine learning knowledge and typically you need to be really specialized in one area. Like I said, most research scientists will have really good understanding, even have their thesis and research in areas like computer vision, LMs, reinforcement learning, right? Because they're literally researching a really niche area and they're like, well, they are the current leading experts or the top like 0.11% of people who know that area really well. So if you do want to be a researcher, you have to know one area or two areas to very, very good depth, more than the majority of machine learning practitioners out there. And lastly, you also need to have some research experience, whether that's working in a research lab or having a PhD. It's in the title, like research engineer or research scientist. So you must have some research experience if you want to work in these roles. So I hope this video gave you a good overview of all the different types of machine learning roles out there but it has only really scratched the surface. There are so many more specialisms and like niche areas you can go into once you're in this role. But at the moment, like I said, don't worry too much about it. If you're looking to get into machine learning, I honestly recommend just becoming a data scientist or machine learning engineer first, and then working your way through uh, the other career paths if that's what you wanna do, because they're the easiest to break into from the offset and it gives you a foot in the door and then from there you can tailor your career path, like I said. If you want some personal and tailored machine learning advice, then I run one-to-one -one coaching and mentoring calls. You can find the link in the description below if you want to book in with me. I'll see you in the next video.